हेलो एवरीवन टुडे स्टोरीज नेम इज मुकेश स्टार्ट्स स्टार्स जू रिटन बाय नाना तदन रस्किन बॉन्ड सो लेट्स स्टार्ट इट ऑन अ विजिट टू दिल्ली विद हिज पेरेंट्स मुकेश स्पेंट टू क्राउडेड आवर्स एट द जू ही वाज डेजल्ड बाय द मेनी कलर्ड फुल बर्ड्स फैसिनेटेड बाय द रेप्टाइल्स चार्म्ड बाय द गिबंस एंड द चिम्स and all struck by the big cats the lions the tigers and leopards there was no zoo in the small town of dera where he lived and the jungle was some way across the river bed so as soon as he got home he decided that he would have a zoo of his own i am going to start a zoo he announced at breakfast the day after his return but you don't have any animals or birds said dolly his little sister i'll soon find them said mukesh that's what a zoo is all about collecting animals he was gazing at the whitewashed walls on the veranda where a kiku a small wall lizard was in pursuit of a fly a little later mukesh was trying to catch the lizard but it was more alert than it looked and always managed to keep a few inches ahead of his grasp That's not the way to catch a lizard," said Teju, appearing on the veranda steps. Teju and his little sister Koki lived next door. "You catch it then," said Mukesh. Teju fetched a stick from the garden where it had been used to prop up sweet peas. He used the stick to tip the lizard off the wall and into a shoe box. "You will be my head keeper," said Mukesh. and soon he and teju were at work in the back of the garden setting up enclosures with the roll of wire netting they had found in the poultry shed where else can we have in the zoo asked teju we need more than a lizard there's your grandmother's parrot said mukesh that's a good idea but we won't tell her about it not yet i don't think she would lend it to us You see it's a religious parrot she has started lots of prayers and chants then people are sure to come and listen to it they'll pay too we must have the parrot then what else well there is my dog said mukesh he is very fierce but a dog isn't a zoo animal mine is he is a wild dog look he is all black all over and he has got yellow eyes There is no other dog like him. Mukesh's dog, who spent most of his time sleeping in the veranda, raised his head and obligingly revealed his yellow eyes. His got jaundice, said Teju. They have always been yellow. All right then. We have got a lizard, a parrot, a black dog with yellow eyes. Koki has a white rabbit. Will she lend it to us? I don't know. She thinks a lot of a rabbit maybe we can rent it from her and there is Sitaram's donkey Sitaram the dhobi boy usually used a donkey to deliver and collect the laundry from the houses along this particular street Do you really want a donkey asked Teju doubtfully Why not it's a wild donkey haven't you heard of them I have heard of a wild ass but not a wild donkey Well they are all related to each other asses donkeys and mules why don't you paint black stripes on it and call it a zebra no that's cheating it's got to be a proper zoo no tricks it's not a circus on saturday afternoon a large placard with corrected spelling announced the opening of zoo it hung around from the branches of the jackfruit tree children were allowed in free but grown-ups had to buy tickets at 50 paise each and koki and dolly were selling homemade tickets to the occasional passerby or parent who happened to look in mukesh and his friends had worked hard at making notices for the various enclosures and each resident of the zoo was appropriately named the first attraction was a large packing case filled with assortment of house lizards they looked rather sluggish having been generously fed with a supply of beetles and other insects then came 
an enclosure in which Koki's white rabbit was on display. Freshly washed and brushed, it looked very cuddly and was all and was praised by all. Staring at it with evil intent from behind wire netting was Mukesh's dog, rare black dog with yellow eyes, read the notice. Those yellow eyes were now trying hard to hypnotize the pink eyes of Koki's nervous rabbit. The dog pawed at the ground, trying to dig its way from under the fence to get at the rabbit. The third to the mango tree was Sitaram's small donkey. At and tacked to the tree was a placard saying wild ass from Kutch. A distant relative it may have been, but everyone recognized it as the local washerman's beast of burden. Every now and then it tried to break loose for it was long past its feeding time. There was also a duck that did not seem to belong to anyone and some cow that had strayed in on its own. But the star attraction was the parrot as it could recite three different prayers over and over again. It was soon surrounded by a group of admiring parents, all of whom wished they had a parrot who could pray or rather do their praying for them. Oddly enough, Koki's grandmother had chosen that day for visiting the temple, so she was unaware of the fuss that was being made of a pet, or even that it had been made an honorary member of the zoo. Teju had convinced himself she wouldn't mind. While Mukesh and Teju were escorting visitors around the zoo, lecturing them on wild dogs and wild asses, Koki and Dolly were doing a brisk trade at the ticket counter. They had collected about 10 rupees and were hoping for it more when there was a disturbance in the enclosures. The black dog with yellow eyes had finally managed to dig his way out of his cage and was now busy trying to dig his way into the rabbit's compartment. The rabbit was running round and round in panic-stricken circles. Meanwhile, the donkey had finally snapped the rope that held it and braying loudly scattered the spectators and made whom made for whom. Koki went to the rescue of a rabbit and soon had it cradled in her arms. The dog now turned his attention to the ducks. The duck flew over the packing case while the dog landed in it, scattering lizards in all directions. In all this confusion, no one noticed that the door of the parrot's cage had slipped open. With a squack and a wear of wings, the bird shot out of the cage and flew off into a nearby orchid. The parrot is gone, shouted Dolly, and almost immediately a silence fell upon the assembled visitors and children. Even the dog stopped barking. Granny's praying parrot had escaped. How could they possibly face her? Teju wondered if she would believe him if he told her it had flown off to heaven. Can anyone see it? he asked tearfully. It's in a mango tree, said Dolly. It won't come back. The crowd fell away, unwilling to share any of the blame when Koki's grandmother came home and discovered what had happened. What, were, what are we going to do now? asked Teju, looking to Koki for help. But Koki was too upset to suggest anything. Mukesh had no idea. I know. We'll, uh, we'll get another one. How? Well, there is the 10 rupees we have collected. We can buy a new parrot for 10 rupees. But won't ga Granny know the difference? Asked Teju. All these hill parrots look alike, said Mukesh. So taking the cage with him, they hurried off to the bazaar, where they soon found a bird seller who was happy to sell them a parrot not unlike grannies. He assured them it would talk. It looks like your grandmother's parrot, said Mukesh on the way. But can it pray? Of course not, said Koki, but we can teach it. Koki's grandmother, who was short-sighted, did not notice the substitution. But she complained bitterly that the bird had stopped repeating its prayers and was instead making rude noises and even swearing occasionally. Teju soon remedied this sad state of affairs. Every morning he stood in front of the parrot's cage and repeated Granny's prayers. Within a few weeks, the bird had learned to repeat one of them. Granny was happy again, not only because her parrot had started praying once more, but because Teju had started praying too.